Good morning. Today I'm in John chapter 18, where Jesus is facing death. Now as we learn from John 10 and verse 17 and 18, Jesus gives up his life voluntarily. He could easily evade the Jews, but he doesn't. So on this particular night, Jesus is with his disciples in a garden across the Kidron Valley. And Judas comes along with a cohort of guards sent by the high priests and the Pharisees. Now this was very frightening for the disciples, but Jesus says to the guards to let them go so as to fulfill the prophecy that not one of the ones that God had given Jesus would be lost. Now as we go through this, many prophecies are fulfilled. And this is important so that we can now see today that Jesus was the Messiah and fulfilled all these prophecies. Because it was frightening, Peter draws his sword and he cuts off the ear of the slave of the high priest. Now Jesus is facing death and yet he is able to deal with this situation. He puts the ear back on. This has a twofold purpose. One, Jesus is reckoned with the lawless ones as prophecy states, and also it destroys any evidence that Peter had done this thing so that he wouldn't get into trouble with the high priest. But this incident was to come back to bite Peter a little bit later on. Jesus is bound and led away. Peter and John follow. The other disciples are scattered for fear, and it's understandable. John and Peter are separated. Peter stands with a group of people around a fire to keep warm because it's the middle of the night and it's cold. In the meantime, Jesus is taken to the high priest and is questioned. They're trying to find something against him. Peter, amongst the ones that um, he's standing with, there is one there who is a relation of the man whose ear was cut off. And he says to Peter, didn't I see you in the garden? Peter denies it out of fear. And it, that's understandable. We would often do something like that. Peter was not disfellowshipped. Jesus kindly overlooked this and understood what was going on behind the scenes. Jesus is then taken to Pilate. Pilate is worried because the Jews claim that Jesus had said he was God's son. Now, Pilate's religion had a pantheon of gods, some of whom cohabited with women and produced these um, hybrid offspring. And it's probably a spin-off from Genesis chapter 6, where the angels forsook their place in heaven and came to marry women. That was before the flood. So these old fables might have some uh, basis in fact. So Pilate washes his hands of the whole matter when the Jews insist that Jesus dies. So Jesus is nailed to this wooden structure. The pain must have been excruciating. And yet he takes care of Mary and gives her to the care of his beloved apostle, John. Jesus, his brothers, sorry, were not believers at this time. Now, many prophecies are fulfilled. They shared Jesus' clothing amongst the soldiers. They cast lots over it. Jesus was thirsty. They gave him vinegar to drink. His bones were not broken, as was necessary for an acceptable sacrifice to God, and yet he was pierced. If you read through chapters uh, 18 to 20, you will, can look up the cross-references and see how many prophecies were fulfilled. Jesus dies before they break his bones. He's laid in fine linen in a tomb with a lot of myrrh and aloes. Jesus' body, however, disappears. And similarly to Moses' body, which is a good thing, a good thing. Now, Jesus said his disciples would have great sorrow, which they did, and great fear. But it's turned to joy when two days later, Jesus appears to the apostles, gives them last-minute instructions, and assures them 
that they will never be on their own. So as you read through these chapters, you might feel the fear. It's, it's in the middle of the night that these things happen. The fear, the sorrow, and then the joy, the great joy. And Jesus' resurrection is what leads to Christianity being spread throughout the world. And here we are, 2,000 years later, still benefiting from what Jesus taught. So, take care and thank you for watching this morning.